All right, so for this video, I thought I'd just talk about the basics of uh, solids of revolution, which is one of the applications of uh, integration. And I'm going to do this using a very basic example, but hopefully we uh, get to understand the concept of what it means. So we have a question here, find the volume of the solid. So we want to find the volume of the solid generated by rotating the curve or the area under the curve y equals x squared about the x-axis uh, from x equals 1 to x equals 4. So every time you are uh, attempting a problem of um, rotating a given area to form a solid, it's very important to come up with a sketch of the function that is going to be rotating. So that's why in this example I've used a pretty straightforward function, which is a parabola y equals x squared. So let's try to sketch this a little quick, see what it looks like. So y equals x squared kind of oops, kind of looks like this. Uh, all right, something like that. Okay, starting from zero. So this is the y-axis. This is the x-axis. Uh, just write y there and x here. So this is our function, y equals x squared. So let's suppose, just for this example, that this is 1 right over here. So this is the area under the curve, obviously, as you can see. Now what we want to do is to rotate this curve about the x-axis, okay? So when we do that, of course, we are going to generate a solid. So let me try to sketch what that solid looks like. So we'll generate a solid that looks kind of like this. And our goal now is to find the volume of this solid that has been generated. Now, in order to do this, we will have to slice this solid into very small uh, slices, which we can approximately look at as cylinders. So if I slice this uh, solid here into small cylinders uh, just sketch what these cylinders would look like so every cylinder is going to look like this so they go on of course reducing in uh, size Oops. and so on until we reach this point here now the reason I'm sketching this is because we want to start out with a cylinder because we know what the volume of a cylinder is. The volume of a cylinder is given by pi times the square of the radius times the height of the cylinder or the distance between the two circular ends. So if I look at this as a cylinder, let me just uh, try to magnify this a little. So if I look at this as a let me just use green here. Uh, just look at this as a cylinder and then I magnify it a little. So it will look like this. Now as you can see the distance from here to here has to be made very 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 small so that uh, our uh, our cylinder is, you know, it, this shape is approximately a cylinder. So this distance here, let's call it delta x, has to be made very, very small so that um, uh, this approximates a cylinder. And then the distance from here to here is obviously going to be the radius of our cylinder. So the volume in this case is going to be pi okay, times the radius. Now, our radius is this distance from here to here, which is essentially the value of y, okay, whatever coordinate of y it is here. So, that's pi y squared. And then, our height, or the distance between the two circular ends, is going to be delta x, okay. Now, what we want to do is to sum up all the delta x i's, because we are going to slice this into very many pieces, so from i equals to 0 to i equals n, essentially all the small slices that we'll be able to come up with, let's say, n slices. And um, 
We can denote this in calculus using integration. Of course, integration means adding very small pieces together. So this is the same as integrating. So integrating from zero to whatever the upper limit is. I'm just not going to put the limits now, but it's integrating pi y squared dx. So as delta x becomes, you know, very small, we can approximate that now using dx, okay? So this is going to be uh, our volume. Now let's apply this to the problem that we have here. So just create more space here. Uh, what, what should I do? Okay, that's it. Um, so our volume now is going to be the integral. Notice we are going from 0 to 1. And then we have pi. Oops, pi times y squared. Our value of y is x squared. So that's going to be x squared squared dx, right? Which is, uh, so pi is a constant, the integral of x to power 4, okay, let me just write that as integral of pi x to the power 4 dx, and then I can now do the integration, which is going to be pi x to the power 5 over 5, we're integrating this from 0 to 1, which is going to be, just put this here, this is going to be pi, you put in the upper limit, which is 1, that's just going to be pi over 5, you put in the lower limit, which is 0, everything is just a 0, so our volume here is pi over 5 cubic units, because we are talking about volume. Alright, thanks for watching this video. I hope this gives you a basic idea of what uh, solids of revolution are and how they work. Uh, I'll do more videos uh, with more interesting examples. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please be sure to do so. Also, give me a thumbs up and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.